Oh my god. Something's been following me. Something's been following me. I... Oh my god. Oh my oh my god. I need help. I need help. I need help. What the fuck was that? Coming up today on Film Master Reviews, Katie Holmes struggles to save her stepdaughter from poorly CGI black creatures in Don't Be Afraid of the Dark, a film produced by visionary filmmaker Guillermo del Toro. Natalia, I trust you. And you can tell me anything, anything at all. They don't like bright lights, you know. Those things. No, no. Also coming up today, Daniel Craig tries to unravel the mysteries of his home in Jim Sheridan's Dream House. What is this? Those kids, you know. I, the ones I chased off, they left us. That's what's coming up today on Film Master Reviews. Code monkey, get up, get coffee. Code monkey, go to job. Code monkey, have boring meeting with boring manager Rob. Much rather wake up, eat a coffee cake, take bath, take nap. This job fulfilling in creative way, such a load of crap. Code monkey thinks someday he have everything, even pretty girl like you. Code monkey just waiting. For now, Cold Monkey says someday, somehow Cold Monkey likes Fritos Cold Monkey likes Tal and Mountain Dew Cold Monkey, very simple man Big, warm, fuzzy, secret heart Cold Monkey like you Welcome back to Film Master Reviews, I'm Adam J. Now, I love Guillermo del Toro as a director. With the Hellboy films and one of my favorite movies, Pan's Labyrinth, under his belt, he's proven himself to be one of Hollywood's most visionary filmmakers. But now he's produced the remake of the classic horror film Don't Be Afraid of the Dark, and it barely even holds up by today's standards. And to be honest, when it comes to horror films today, there aren't any standards. Those of you who don't know about the original film, I'll give you the skinny. The original was a psychological, very frightening horror film. Why? Because you never saw the creatures. The creatures were heard, but were never seen. They were always in the darkness and shadows. So in the original, when this couple was being psychologically tortured by these creatures, it made for some great suspense, because you never knew where the hell these things were. In this remake, the creatures are shown like every five minutes, so there is absolutely no suspense or horror to be had. The film follows a couple played by Katie Holmes and Guy Pearce who, while renovating an old mansion, welcomed Pierce's daughter from his previous marriage. Over the course of her stay, this little girl is visited by horribly CGI creatures who try to get her into the basement because they feed on the teeth of children or some shit. After these creatures are released from the basement, do they kill this girl in her sleep? No, they just wait patiently, framing the little girl for all kinds of dumb shit. Her father thinks she's crazy, but after a while, her stepmother begins to believe her. And pretty soon, the family is being hunted by these creatures who could have taken the little girl's teeth at any moment, but didn't to extend the runtime of the film. This was 
not only a pitiful remake, this was a serious test in patience. This movie is so drawn out, so unsuspenseful, and so ungodly boring that it made me want to walk out on it several times. There is nothing scary in this film. It's a genuine bore from start to finish. There was one good thing in the movie, and you're all gonna think I'm crazy, but it was Katie Holmes. Katie Holmes managed to pull a very believable, heartwarming performance in this film. She really played the stepmother character well, showing us the character's anguish as she desperately tries to get this little girl to like her. Everyone can hate me for this, but I don't think Katie Holmes is a bad actress by any stretch, and I personally believe she only has a bad rap due to Dawson's Creek. Sure, she doesn't always pick the best movies to do, but she's pretty damn good. And that brings me to this point. If you are not a fan of Katie Holmes, never watch this movie, because you will most likely have zero enjoyment. Now, I've said twice already that the creatures were horribly CG, and I cannot stress that enough. They looked so fucking awful. Some of the sets are nice, such as the maze and the gardens, but the film has zero atmosphere. It just comes off as a waste of good sets that would have been better off in a better movie. Overall, there isn't much I can say about this movie that I haven't already. It's a boring remake. Guy Pierce is boring, the little girl is irritating, and absolutely nothing about this film can be considered scary. A very well done performance by Katie Holmes is all this movie has going for it, and it's a shame to see her talent wasted in this dribble. The direction is awful, and the production values, minus a couple nice sets here and there, lack any substance or atmosphere. I, for one, am extremely disappointed in Guillermo del Toro. I mean, even Blade 2 was a fun action movie I could sit through, but this was just garbage. To quote a great man, del Toro, what happened? Did, did your balls drop off? Well, del Toro, if so, you better get him back quick and give us Hellboy 3. I think we've all been patient enough for that one. Whatever you do, do not see Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. Please. Just because you keep denying it does not mean it's not happening. Don't be afraid of the dark. So now we move on to the second movie on my list, Dreamhouse. Dreamhouse revolves around a father, played by Daniel Craig, who encounters strange events in his home. Now, the sad thing is, if you've seen the trailer for Dreamhouse, you've seen the movie. The trailer literally gives away every twist in this film. The house has been empty a long time. I need to talk to you about one of your patients, Peter Ward. Let's make sure we're talking about the same man. It's not Peter Wood. That's me. Yeah! That's the movie! That's it! So I watched the film after I saw the trailer and knew everything that was going on because I fucking watched it already! So yeah, Daniel Craig finds out that he was released from an asylum for allegedly killing his family. Now he's seeing the ghosts of his dead wife and daughters because he can't let them go and now must try to piece together the events that led to their deaths even if it means finding out that he killed them. Now, despite the knowledge I had about this film going in and the knowledge I had while I was watching it, I can say this about it. I was never bored. I mean, I will watch this a hundred times over before I watch Don't Be Afraid of the Dark again. My God. I was annoyed at certain parts of this film, more particularly the ending climax, but I was never bored. Despite the often predictable crap, it was an entertaining thriller up until the last 10 minutes, largely due to the superb cast. Daniel Craig is always good, Rachel Weisz is always good, and Naomi Watts is... Uh, sometimes good, but she was okay in this. Daniel Craig gives a believable performance as a man trying to distinguish fantasy from reality when he discovers that he's really imagining his wife and children in the house. Rachel Weisz gives a nice performance as his wife, who doesn't believe that she and her daughters are dead. In fact, the scenes of her trying to come to terms with this reality are some of the best in the film. Peter Ward. Slaughter House. 
Who's Peter Ward? Naomi Watts plays the neighbor who tries to help Craig the best she can, not believing that he would have ever killed his wife. Her performance isn't bad, but it's undermined almost completely by the performances of Craig and Weiss. I don't know the actor's name, but the guy who played Watts' ex-husband was god-awful. His acting was cringe-inducing, and his ultimate place in the story comes the fuck out of nowhere. I mean, this movie even has Casey Jones himself, alias Kataeus in it, and they do nothing with him. This is just one of those thrillers that has a lot of setup and very, very little payoff. Towards the end, it was like the screenwriter just gave up and rushed to get the script done. The climax, and so-called final twist in this film, is so fucking rushed and stupid, you'd swear it wasn't even written. It had almost nothing to do with the rest of the story. Overall, Dreamhouse was a film with potential that just failed to deliver. It's feats better than Don't Be Afraid of the Dark, but still, it's nothing to write home about. It's really nothing original, despite its good atmosphere, and isn't anything we haven't seen before in better movies. If it's ever on TV, I'd recommend giving it a watch, maybe once. But I can't condone anyone paying $10 to see it in the theater. Filmmaster Reviews, I'm Adam J. Later. What do you remember? I left my wife and my family at home this morning. Who's at the door? There's something wrong with this house. You can't stay there. Taj off me, you damn dirty ape!